here at Table Talk, Assistive Technology for Women in Ag. And Abby and Linda, why don't you take it away? All right, I'm going to share my screen here just a moment. All right. All right, good afternoon, everyone. We are gonna get started today with Table Talk, Assistive Technology for Women in Ag. Uh, this is an unconferencing session. Uh, we will have some open discussion time and we definitely encourage you to interact either through the chat with the reaction or emoji buttons um, or at various times by unmuting your microphone and we'll let you know when those opportunities come up. Uh, we, like like the, the title says, table talk. We want this to be like we are sitting around a table just having a discussion. I'm sure we all miss that. Uh, so we'll try and get as close to that as we can today. Um, we're also gonna have some interaction with a menti quiz. Uh, we will be providing that information as we go along, uh, but you will need a web browser or a smartphone um, or other device in order to participate in those quiz questions. Uh, but we're going to start off by introducing our speakers here today. Um, I'm going to start with my, myself. Uh, my name is Abby Spackman. I am the project assistant and case coordinator for Agribility for Pennsylvanians. I have been working with Agribility since 2015, and my primary focus is on providing worksite evaluations, assistive technology recommendations, and working directly with our clients. I also grew up on a farm in central Pennsylvania and continue to work with my family on our diversified farm. Unfortunately, Karen was not able to be with us today. However, she did help with um, the presentation and the content. Um, that's Karen Bunkenbush with Missouri Agribility. And then I will hand it over to Linda to introduce herself. Thank you, Abby. Hi, my name is Linda Fetzer, and I've been part of the Pennsylvania Agribility Project for about 25 years, and I've worked for both the nonprofit partner and the Penn State Extension side of the project. For the first 15, 16 years, I got to do the fun stuff, all of the client services, the farm visits, working with VR, and making recommendations for, a, for assistive technology. For the past nine years, my role has changed to include more of the evaluation efforts and administrative responsibilities as the co-PI. And I am also a third generation farm owner. Welcome to our presentation. Um, this presentation is a joint effort, as Abby said, between Pennsylvania and Missouri Agribility Project, as well as our Women in Ag initiative with eExtension. And just our learning objectives, like Abby said, we're gonna do a lot of interaction. So explore, discuss, identify, um, what are the limitations in equipment, discuss what adaptations are available, and then identify some AT recommendations and resources for women. Okay, so. If I go back one. <laughs> yeah, right. are we gonna, Menti? Oh, yep, we're gonna do our first Menti question. So I will stop sharing so that Linda can share our Menti question. Okay, so hopefully everybody sees that. Abby, do you see that? Uh, yep, there it is. Okay, so this is our first question. If you go to menti.com and use the code at the top, um, Abby's going to put that information into the chat as well. Um, if you have some recommend, if you've recommended a piece of assistive technology for a woman in the past, what challenges did you encounter? So it'll give you three slots for answers and go ahead and put those answers in. And, and I see it from my yep. slide. Information is in the chat if anybody wants to click the link there should be if you have recommended a piece of assistive technology. Hmm. 
No spell checker in Menti. <laughs> Just go ahead and put your answers in. We'll see if there's some similarities that we've all dealt with. If we haven't, um, like I, I work for state VR, so I don't recommend anything. You know, I get recommendations. Do you want us to just go ahead and answer so that we can do the next one or will the next one come up if it's appropriate for us to answer? If you want to answer, that's fine. If, if not, if it doesn't apply to you, that's fine too. This is just to kind of get an idea if we're looking at some of the same things. We're having some of the same issues. I also see someone added into the chat size and ease of use. Good. These are great answers. Force used to use the product, cost of the modification, ease of use. A man saying we don't need it. I assume that's what it means. Weight of the tool, grip size, wrong size, wrong height. We'll give this uh, just a couple more seconds. And if anyone's having trouble using Menti, just let us know. We are going to do one more of these types of quizzes a little bit later on. Okay, well, there's some more grip size. Let's gain some popularity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of these things we're gonna be talking about in, in a few minutes. Yeah. All right, should I go ahead and stop share? Sure. All right, I will switch back to our PowerPoint. All right. All right, so are all tools created equally? And more to our discussion, uh, you know, what, what really is the difference between tools for men and tools for women? And is there a difference? Um, some things to keep in mind as we go through today is that, yes, there is a difference. Um, on average, women have 40 to 75 percent less upper body strength and 5 to 30 percent less lower body strength. Uh, they always also have a smaller stature, average five inches shorter than males. And Linda and I are both on the, <laughs> the very short side <laughs> of that. So we definitely understand that from personal experience. Uh, women typically have narrower shoulders and wider hips, uh, proportionally shorter legs and arms, smaller grip, and 50 to 75% less grip strength. Um, and we've seen that as well. We take a, a little device with us when we go to shows uh, and test grip strength. People have fun doing that. And you can definitely tell that women have less grip strength, uh, but women do have greater flexibility. Uh, they usually have a lower center of gravity. Uh, and then there's also considerations like, you know, being pregnant or nursing. Now, that is not to say that women are not strong. Uh, believe me, I am the last person who would say that. Uh, but we do need to recognize the physical differences among women. Um, we're not weak. We're not wimpy or anything like that. We're, we're not saying that. We're just simply recognizing that there are differences. Um, and that does impact tool and equipment use. 
livestock handling and recommending assistive technology. And the things that we're gonna talk today do apply to agribility and the things that we recommend for assistive technology, um, but they also apply to all women. And some of the things we talk about will also apply to anyone using tools and equipment. So just keep that in mind. Now, um, when we're recommending tools or when I'm specifically recommending tools for all clients, I suggest testing out or trying out the AT or the assistive technology as much as possible before making and purchase, especially if it's a significant investment. But this is especially true for women. And I do this myself. I um, was just recently at a hardware store trying out some tools and some pruners to make sure that they're going to fit my hands. Um, we can't just assume that tools and equipment existing on the farm, uh, while they might be good for some workers, we can't assume that they will be great for the female workers on the farm. And um, we kind of saw that in some of the Menti responses that sometimes people just assume that things will work the same for women. Testing out tools for size, weight, functionality, and yes, even the color and appearance is important, um, especially for those of you who are recommending items in assistive technology. You have to keep in mind that if the individual does not like using the tool, and that includes if they don't like the color, they will not use it. Uh, that applies to yourself. If you go try out a tool or gloves and you don't like them, you will most likely not use them and they will become dusty and rusty in your shed. But let's get started with some questions because again, we want this to be interactive. We wanna provide information and we also wanna hear back from all of you. So we'll start with kind of a funner and easy question. And you are welcome to type in the chat. You are also welcome to unmute. Just keep in mind when you are done speaking to mute yourself again. Um, and if anybody gets too far down a rabbit trail, I will interrupt. Um, but please feel free to interact and to share. Uh, the first question is, what is a favorite tool that you have that fits you well? And even if you're, you know, if you're a man, you can still answer this question. Anybody on here can answer this question. Um, just what is a favorite tool that fits you well um, or that has made a big difference in completing your tasks? And I'll start by sharing an example. Um, mine is actually a wire weeding hoe from Never Sink Farm. And I like it because it has a long handle so I can stand upright. It's lightweight. Um, and it's very easy to use and it saves me a lot of hard hand weeding and time in the garden uh, since you use it when the weeds are in a white thread stage. Uh, so wire weeding hoe. Um, I see we're getting some responses in the chat. Linda, do you wanna? Yep. Some of those? Um, Shannon made a point to, about left-handed and right-handed people as well. Um, and then we've got some great responses. Falco hand pruners, pointy hoe, garden spade, a handheld garden spade. And of course, one of our favorites, green heron farm her tools. We'll yes. talk a little later. And the light, lightweight log tongs. That would be interesting to learn a little bit more about. Yeah, definitely. Those are all great. Uh, if anybody wants to unmute and share a favorite, a favorite tool, go ahead. There's a short handled shovel and rake for gardening, as well as a calf hook, great for catching calves. Ratcheting lumber, ratcheting pruners, multi purpose bulb plant auger drill accessory. Oh, I like that idea. Um, Ralph said, I find that ratcheting pruners are often better than regular pruners, especially for those who have grip problems. Good to know, Ralph. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. I'll have to take a look at those. All right. If you're still typing or still want to add in your favorite tools, you can continue that. But I am going to move on to the next question. 
And that is, how do you know if it's the wrong tool? Uh, we talk a lot about using the right tool, um, but, but how do you know if it's the wrong tool? Um, what are some ways that, you know, if you're out working, you're out doing something, what might be some indications that you're using the wrong tool or that you need to get a different tool? Um, something to keep in mind might be blisters. If you're getting blisters, um, either you need a different tool or you're using it wrong or you need to take a break. <laughs> what are some other indicators that you might look for in yourself or you might look for when you're doing an assessment? Another favorite tool was the garden weasel. And then some responses to your latest question makes you sore. It goes flying off your hands. <laughs> yep. <laughs> back hurts, too heavy, cramps, can't accomplish the job, sore back. An easy task takes longer and harder to do. Ralph's talking about the benefits of raised beds, which are great. Yes. We're thinking of doing that on our, on our own farm. Yeah, they're great. Easier. Mm -hmm. Tired afterwards. Mm -hmm. And a hand cramping is something that I noticed too. Yeah, that's my Things stronger in different ways. All right, now does anybody want to share how you might know that it is the right tool? What are some indicators? I know it's kind of, some of them might be kind of obvious, but um, you can either put some indicators for how you know it's the right tool um, or things to look for in choosing the right tool. Um, like, you know, some of the, the things on the screen, like size and length, um, handle and, and foot placement. Are there some other things that you should look for or other indicators that you consider when selecting a tool? It's a good tool if one does not have to have great strength to use it. The weight of the tool, those are great. I know as a person, like Abby said, a little vertically challenged. Um, if I'm not hitting myself with part of the tool, especially like a long handled tool, that's always a, a benefit. Feels balanced, no hand cramps or blisters. Great answers. Softer, larger grip. I saw somebody made a comment about any tool that is sharpened. So definitely proper maintenance of tools and tools that are not broken is important. All right, you're welcome to continue uh, typing in the chat box, but we do have a lot we want to share today. So we're going to move on. Um, when you're selecting tools, again, as we discussed, it's important to make sure you have the right tool for the specific individual and don't just assume that any tool will work. Um, just because there is a tool shed full of tools doesn't mean that the individual has the right tool that they need. And whether it's for yourself or you're making a recommendation for someone, keep in mind that trying things out and testing them ahead of time is, is always a great option. So we are going to move on here and Linda's gonna share a little bit about gloves. Thanks, Abby. Um, hands are complex because they include tendons, 27 bones, tissues, and nerves. With all of these working parts, the potential is great for a variety of injuries. And it's amazing, a hand 
injury can make it difficult to do even the most simple tasks. Um, according to the Industrial Safety and Hygiene News, 60% of all hand injuries could be reduced by wearing work gloves. Protecting your hands should be a top priority. Most hand injuries are due to misuse, tool misuse, improper gloves, carelessness, and distractions. Hand protection and safety should be a top priority. Do not settle for whatever gloves were left in the shop, just like Abby said about the tools. Just because there's tools in the shop doesn't mean it's the right one for you. Same with gloves. Um, I really liked what the speaker from Missouri said last week. You have different pairs of shoes for different purposes, and that should be the same with gloves. So purposely go to stores and try on gloves to find the best fitting glove for you. Once you find the right gloves for the job and they're a good fit for your hand and right for the task, I'd recommend buying extra pairs because it's always disappointing when you find that great pair of whatever and then the product's discontinued or you can no longer find it. When looking for the right gloves, look at the material, at the grip. Um, also look at what types of your jobs that you're going to use, the, the size of the glove. Um, I know I have a hard time finding gloves because my hands are very small. So I end up having that one inch of extra flappy stuff on the end. And it's really hard to do a job safely. So I, it takes me a long time to find gloves that really fit well. Um, if you need to reduce the pressure on the palms of your hands, you can add padding in the palm area of the glove. Um, now we want to hear a little bit about your experience regarding gloves. Um, have you been able to find gloves? If so, where have you been able to find gloves? Um, either drop your information in the chat or unmute to share your experiences. Yeah, we had Elizabeth share that gloves are not one size fits all. <laughs> I know I had the wrong ones. Um, and then Ralph sharing some of his experiences, but saying that he found gloves that were a little more expensive, but they fit very well and they're worth the difference. Exactly. I would also mention that after COVID rubber gloves that a lot of, um, like farm milkers used really went up in price and for men and women. So my dad needs a double XL and those are almost not to be found. Mm -hmm. Whereas my mom, my sister and I all need medium, which used to be about $9 a box has now gone up to $30 a box. Oh and we find them at Fleet Farm and Menards in Wisconsin, but even going online and looking at Amazon. Yeah, it's about $30 a box average now. Wow. Oh, thank you for sharing that, Melissa. I did not realize that. And that's really good information to have. Um, Lonnie says, West County work gloves for women, Johnny's Seed and other places. I know Abby and I ordered some gloves off of Amazon. They were anti-vibration gloves. And the, the fit was very different. Mm -hmm. um, my hands are very small, but even the small gloves I had trouble wearing because they were too small, which never happens. Harbor Freight is great for rubber gloves. I think there's some other ones. Looks like Rod's been shopping with us on Amazon for the mm. anti gloves. Yeah, Ketra said about cold climates, it's hard to find the right glove that is functional, fits right, and keeps your hands warm. Definitely, when they're insulated, that adds another level to consider. Yeah, when it's hard enough finding a glove, but something mm -hmm. that fits right and keeps your hands warm, um, it's challenging. Um, so again, like Abby said, when you're looking for AT, try things out, um, see what's going to work best. Ah, Susan Jaster suggested looking outside the industry, such as painting. And then marine supply stores are great waterproof options for dairy farmers. Nice suggestion, Lonnie. Can't find fuzzy yellow gloves in a woman's size. Get gloves from Tierra Dulce. Ah, 
We'll have to look into that one and copy that, and that name. We've also had a few uh, clients who had um, various disabilities or differences in their hands, and some of them had had success finding local seamstresses that could make them custom gloves. So that's something to keep in mind for individuals who might not be able to just buy gloves off the shelf. Surgical type gloves under your favorite gloves in the winter. Also most work on touchscreen phones. Excellent suggestion. Thank you, Teresa. Hey, Abby, if you want to move on to the next one. I know we're all right. Lots to cover. Thank you. All right. So we are going to talk about tractors, UTVs, and vehicles. And we kind of discussed this earlier, but this definitely um, is seen when, especially when women are working on farms alongside men. Um, and I grew up working on a farm where I was one of the few women uh, working alongside a whole bunch of men. Um, and we see this a lot. And typically the equipment is sized and set up for the height and weight of the men on the farm. Uh, so go ahead and add an emoji or a reaction. If you've ever gone to drive a piece of equipment and the seat won't adjust due to rust, clutter, or just a total lack of adjustments. Has anybody else experienced that? Getting some thumbs up there. Um, or how many times have you found yourself stretching to reach the foot controls because they're just too far away? <laughs> so that can be frustrating, but oftentimes it's something that women just accept. They just deal with it. Uh, the men on the farm might not see a problem with it. And so it just, it's not that big of a, a, a deal, um, but it can really cause a lot of strain on individuals when you're not properly positioned and your seat is not properly adjusted. Um, I actually recently had to make some adjustments to the tractor seat on my family farm. Uh, there were some family members who were amazed that the seat could actually adjust. And I said, well, when you take the hammer out of the way, <laughs> it adjusts. Uh, so I totally speak from personal experience on this one. Um, we have to make sure that we are adjusting equipment to fit us or we're helping our customers and clients adjust their equipment to fit them. Another thing to keep in mind is that some women are also not comfortable with some types and sizes of equipment, uh, but are often thrown into operating the equipment in times of need, such as harvest season with little or no training. They're said, hey, just go bring that tractor and wagon down here. Uh, you can do it. And they might not actually be comfortable doing that, um, but under the pressure, they might, they might do it. Um, and that can lead to stress and anxiety. It can lead to injury and accidents. Um, and so not only is it the size of the equipment, but being comfortable with it and knowing how to operate the equipment. Um, so sometimes it's not necessarily a different piece of equipment, but modifying how a piece of equipment is operated or training on correct operation. Uh, so, so when there's a lot that we can talk about when it comes to tractors and vehicles and equipment, um, but when we're looking at assessing a piece of equipment, either for ourselves or a, a client, um, sometimes simply asking, can you fully engage the clutch while your back is resting on the backrest of the seat can be a good place to start. Um, and I'm guilty of scooching way up to the front of the seat so that I can, in, you know, press, engage the, the clutch. Uh, and that's not a good practice. Um, so what are some questions that you might ask uh, when you're assessing a piece of equipment for yourself or a female client? Again, type in the chat or feel free to unmute. 
Abby, similar to what you just said, Kara said, sitting on the edge of a seat to touch pedals makes for a sore back. I said, yeah, sore back, sore neck, sore arms, sore legs, everything. So Yes. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and a lot of times, again, we just accept that. We're just like, well, this is what I got to do. Mm-hmm. And that's one thing when women in ag are maybe getting into farming that they should really look at a tractor to see, does it fit them? Does it fit the job? Not just the price tag. Yes. Again, going and trying them out, seeing if the seat adjusts. Any other questions or things you might ask uh, or consider when assessing a piece of equipment? I would say that the first step, I know some of those tractors, that first step would be impossible for me to step onto. Yes, exactly. Melissa said about lawnmowers as well. This person. Oh. Ralph said, does the person weigh enough to keep the auto kill from engaging? My mother only weighed 85 pounds and every time she hit a bump, she would rise enough for the engine to shut off. Yes. And unfortunately, in that scenario, what usually happens? They disconnect the switch. They, they buy totally buses. understand that. But then we have some other safety concerns. So, yeah, excellent point. Yep. Um, Ketra said pedal extensions um, using for adapting vehicles might be helpful. Good point by Kendra. Just because a woman or someone has always used equipment a certain way, there's a time to prevent further injury, pain, or discomfort. And Josie, are there any disability accommodation needs to consider both physical and mental? Um, these are ways to adapt farm equipment as well. Kara's feeling Melissa's pain. I mow our yard and have to stand up on the pedals to lower the deck. Yeah, I won't tell you how my dad modified our lawnmower when I was younger to mow the yard. It's not, not safe. There anything else anyone has come across other types of equipment that perhaps you've come across that there have been issues with operating i would say skid steer loaders because depending on how low you it's already the visibility of a skid steer loader is so bad but being short i think would be even more difficult mm -hmm. visibility can definitely be a big factor All right, we'll switch gears here for a minute. Um, and if anyone wants to share a, a piece of equipment or equipment modification that has helped you, that has improved safe equipment operation, that has helped with some of these issues that we just discussed, um, either assistive technology that you've used or that you've recommended. Um, I know we had a few people sharing some throughout there, but is there any specific solutions that you have found? Cab cameras and mirrors can be something to help with that visibility aspect. I would say tractor steps. Mm -hmm. 
extensions, foam, pipe foam insulation to adapt grip and extensions on handles or controls. Excellent ideas. Sometimes simply fixing a piece of equipment so that it operates correctly. Um, men tend to be more comfortable operating a piece of equipment that is not completely operable, such as the brakes might not work well, um, and they might just continue to operate it like that. But women are usually not as bold or as comfortable with that. Uh, so sometimes simply fixing a piece of equipment so that it operates well. Uh, we should do that for anyone and everyone, of course, but that can sometimes be something that makes it more comfortable for women to operate equipment. Suggestion for additional mirrors. Again, that's great. Um, Yes. Well, I hope everybody gets to think in a little bit more, put your thinking hats on a little bit more for assistive technology solutions, because we're going to be talking a lot more about that in our next slide. If I can get it to change here. There we go. <laughs> um, but we are going to start by doing our next Menti quiz question. So I will let... Linda, share her screen and go ahead and get ready to do another Menti question. So get your smartphone or your device and go to menti.com and you'll just type in the code. It'll actually be the same code. Um, so it may come up for some of you. If you are not able to figure out how to do Menti, you can type into the chat, but we do hope that you'll use Menti. Tara mentioned, my husband got rid of barbed wire fences and put in swing gates. He got tired of shutting fences I couldn't get. Yes, <laughs> that is, yeah, that's great. <laughs> gates, there's lots of great gate um, assistive technology and modifications, so that's excellent. All right, so from our discussions, uh, what will you now consider when making AT recommendations for women? We've got size, appropriate gloves, height of tractor steps, arm length, visibility, ask more questions, seat weight, Look at tools, try out equipment, comfort. I thought maybe I'd see somebody put color in there. <sighs> Easy to use, the type of the job. Yeah, so there are a lot of factors. Yeah, try it first. Definitely that testing it out. I usually give my clients homework and their homework is usually to go out and try out or test out a various piece of assistive technology. Items for shorter people. Yeah, that height. The shorter height, the, the lower upper body strength, those can be really important factors to consider. I think about like the utility vehicles, um, the Polaris Ranger, the, the cargo bed is a little higher than maybe a Gator or a Kubota. So if, if me as a short person trying to load something into a utility vehicle, I'm going to need a lower height of a cargo bed. Yes. Yeah, and that's excellent point too, especially for those of you on today who 
make recommendations on assistive technology, particularly if you're making recommendations to VR, um, keeping in mind that you might need to specify uh, some of these things. I, I recently was recommending a utility vehicle for mobility, and one of the specifications was, you know, this particular individual is has a shorter leg length, and so there was a particular utility vehicle that they needed that provided enough seat adjustment for them to be able to safely operate it. Uh, so that's something that you need to specify when making recommendations um, and specify, you know, when you're, when you're telling your clients to check things out, not everybody thinks to look at that or thinks that there might be a utility vehicle with a better option. All right, I think I will switch back to the PowerPoint. All right. So we've kind of talked about various assistive technology throughout today, um, but just so that everybody you know keeps keeps in mind, assistive technology is any um, item or piece of equipment, whether off the shelf or customized. Uh, that helps someone based on their disability or their physical needs. And there can be all different types of assistive technology or modifications. Um, and can, can again include everything that we've talked about today, you know, just simply the right size tool for that person, the right type of gloves, um, steps, cameras, backup cameras, mirrors, all of those things are types of assistive technology or modifications. Um, but is there any, um, if, if, is there any assistive technology recommendations that anyone has made specifically for women, perhaps something that's unique um, or that, that you've recommended um, you know, specifically for a female farmer? The, the young woman here in this, the picture, um, maneuvering that milk taxi um, due to, to just her size, the size of the milk taxi and her disability, that was extremely difficult for her. While that's, that's something that we might recommend as assistive technology, in this case, it was difficult for her to use that milk taxi. So we looked at a, a motorized uh, cart that was easier for her to maneuver. So that was an example of, you know, some something that is assistive technology for one person is not assistive technology for another person. Does anyone else have any scenarios like that that they would would share? Maybe it's nap time. For those would, would be handing out chocolate at this point. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you who are female farmers, is there a piece of assistive technology that you use that has made a big difference for you? We have a stool on the dairy farm that connects around your waist and then you can sit right on it. So it looks like you're kind of, you have a tail, but then you don't have to squat by the cows and it puts you at an equal level with the udders. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Melissa, I've always been curious how much balance you need to safely operate that. I can see me doing well with that. <laughs> Once you get used to it, it's not too bad. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Couple suggestions in the chat, anything with wheels, double wheeled wheelbarrow. Uh, my ranger with cake feeder, I have an extra step added to my tractor step, garden rocker.
somebody had mentioned gates earlier again automatic gates i know growing up you know i was always the one stuck jumping out and opening the gates and i'd fight with fight with gates all the time so automatic gates again can be a huge help Uh, Susan said, instead of using actual water tanks, I use coolers because they're lightweight and the right size for sheep and goats. And Rod said, I recommended a four inch platform for the floor of a tractor so her feet could reach the floor for stability. <laughs> I think I need one of those. <laughs> Uh, as Meralda said, we have recommended the wheel hoe and a couple of female to a couple of females, and that's made weeding easier. Um, Pauline said, rehab professionals such as occupational therapists can make customized hand splints to help compensate for various problems post hand injuries. Yeah. All right, well, you can keep adding um, assistive technology suggestions as you come up with them. We are gonna move on here just to talk this about- Ned. This is oh. Ned Stoller. Yeah, I, go ahead, Ned. I don't know if I could share my screen for a moment, um, but I had a senior design group do a project for a woman beekeeper. And I could just, it's kind of hard to describe um, but I, I could try if you want me to, or I could e just email you the picture, but it's a, a back support brace called the Springs back that an auto mechanic designed to hold his torso up when he's bent over the engine compartment of a vehicle, but it, it pushed on his chest. And when he would bend down farther or stand up, it would kind of slide against his chest and it doesn't work for women. And so I had my senior design group sort of redesign this thing hmm. so that it doesn't slide on the person's chest and they built an extension. It also didn't work very well for heavier people. And so the way they redesigned it, it can work either for women or people that are heavier set um, just in the way they did it. And I can email you pictures of it later. It's not a finished project yet, but they definitely improved it. Yeah, that would be um, so we're excellent gonna, to we're see. Go to do some field testing on it now. There's, uh, you know, beekeepers are bent over a lot of the time looking into their hives. And also I have a client that's a farrier. And so she's bent over a lot working on horses hooves. So I want her to test this, uh, field test it and continue to improve the design because it really does take the strain off of someone's back when they have to be bent over in a sustained position. Yeah, that's, that's great. And that's a great example of what we're talking about. Thank you, Ned. That would be really interesting to see. Any, anybody else wanna jump in and share examples like that? Okay, so we're going to go over just a very few resources. There's a lot more out there, and I'm actually hoping that you can give us, give the group some feedback as well on some things. Um, I'll put the links in the chat when I'm done. Um, but one of the resources, obviously, is Green Heron Tools. This is a company for women by women, and they've developed various tools, um, cutting and digging tools mainly. Um, AgriSafe has a variety of resources regarding women's health, including ergonomics. And then e-extension, we have the Women in Ag landing page and some articles, but we're in the process of expanding the Women in Ag section to highlight resources with tractor machinery, health and wellness, animal handling and tools. And Karen and I hope to have that completed sometime in May. Um, examples of some of the resources on e-extension include e-books, 
specifically developed for women in agriculture concerning animal handling, addressing safe beef cattle handling and safe dairy cattle handling for women. And again, I'll put these in the chat, um, the links, but if anybody else has any other resources, please unmute your mic and share with the group or drop the inf information in the chat. Yeah, I added the link for Green Heron yep. Tools and Linda Beat will me add to it. a couple, yeah, Linda will add a couple others, but if anybody else has um, links or resources, places that you've found some of the assistive technology or gloves or things that you've talked about today, uh, it would be great to share a link in the chat. Um, or if you're not able to share a link, you can even unmute and just share the, the resource. And Teresa, must, she must be referencing the picture on the screen. She said, standing up from sitting on that chair is near impossible, been there, done that. Uh, yeah, that can be a challenge for some individuals. Um, and sometimes, you know, handles or other um, devices to help you stand back up might be, <laughs> might be a good solution. Be entering resources. If anybody has questions, uh, we do have a little bit more time here if, if, if we want to do some questions. adding the CDC document. And then there's a, another description from Ned. I appreciate that, Ned. And thank you. I just want to thank everybody for participating today. Thank you for all the interactions. Um, I hope everybody learned something new. Um, if you did learn something new, I hope you'll go and share that with someone else and keep sharing and passing along the information. Uh, we will hang out here for a few more minutes. If anybody has questions or wants to share anything else, uh, please feel free to do so.